Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your special night. My name is Katherine Underwood, and I'm a 2004 graduate of Timberlane High School. After many, many stops along my journey, I have finally landed right here in Boston as a weekend anchor for NBC10 Boston. Now, you may know, but I want to show you anyways, we just opened a brand new state-of-the-art facility in Newton. And before I get started, I wanted to give you a quick look outside and then take a look now inside our massive newsroom where we follow breaking news every day and the very best human interest stories we can find. And then finally, I wanna give you a little behind the scenes look at Studio One where we broadcast all of our NBC10 Boston shows. It really is pretty amazing. I am so lucky to be a part of this incredible team of journalists and I'm really grateful every single day that I was able to achieve my dream of working in broadcast journalism back home here in New England. You know, writing has always been my passion. And as a little kid, it wasn't back to school shopping for clothes that I looked forward to most. It was back to school shopping for supplies. I found so much joy in the smell, you guys may think this is weird, but in the smell of freshly opened notebooks and the way a brand new pen fell gliding across the clean white paper. And I still enjoy that to this day. You know, as a first grader, there was nothing I loved more than writing and illustrating my own book on construction paper. And then I remember taking it and handing it over to my teacher to have the pages laminated. That was a really big deal. I was always so, so proud of my finished product. In fact, I do think that I still have some of them in a box in my mom and dad's attic. Now through high school, I was really busy playing softball and cheerleading and trying my best to maintain an A average in every single class. And so when juggling it all became too overwhelming, I turned to my teachers. They calmed my nerves, they helped me focus, and they were more than my teachers, they were my friends, they were my confidants, they were a guiding light. Mr. C, my AP English teacher, nurtured my passion for writing. He encouraged me, he challenged me, and he laid the foundation for what would become my career. And through the next 15 years, I would enjoy the euphoric highs of brief success and in the TV industry, the many crushing blows of defeat. And at that, those critical times, I would turn to this. Hold on, bear with me, everyone. The Mountains of Tibet. It's a book about life's choices and the endless possibilities, but it's what's written in blue pen on the very first page that is what has encouraged me most. It says, Catherine, I wish every person I knew had your drive, your desire to learn, and your integrity. I have been honored to be your teacher, and I hope someday I can be honored to be a friend. Peace, Mr. C. And through all these years, I've tried my best to live up to Mr. C's expectations of me. I've maintained my drive, and no matter what, I've never once compromised my integrity. I've also never lost my desire to learn, as he mentioned. And I have yet another Timberlane teacher to thank for my latest lesson. A few months ago, I got this email in my inbox in the newsroom after a show. Hi, Catherine, nice story about the bears. But I taught 12th grade English at Timberlane in which you had been in one of my classes because I used to beat kids over the head about precision grammar usage. You would never say the bear and cubs are invading campsites in the North Woods because of the trash people leave laying around. Trash is lying around. I know, I know, English grammar, boring. Well, Mr. Phelan finished that email with some kind words about my success. Now, he may have thought that that was just a simple, quick note to a former student, but what I tried to explain to him in my response email was that he reignited my passion for writing and my knack for proper grammar. In that moment, through that simple note, all of these years later, he made me a better journalist. I emailed him directly to tell him that, and then, as most TV personalities do, I took to social media, and here's what I wrote, in part. I pride myself on being a grammar snob, just ask my friends and especially my husband. The other day I screwed up lying and laying on air. Today this book showed up for me in the mail with a kind note. 
One of my old Timberlane High School teachers watches our newscasts and is still teaching me. Thanks, Mr. Phelan, for your lifelong commitment to making your students better. I am so grateful. So I take this book, my Strunk and White mini grammar Bible from Mr. Phelan, and I put it right next to the mountains of Tibet from Mr. C. And every single day as I strive to be better, I know that I still have the unwavering support and encouragement from two of my high school teachers right here next to me. I tell you these stories because I just really hope that I can make it clear that your impact on your students goes far beyond the classroom and lasts long after graduation. So when Tracy called me to ask me to be the keynote speaker at the educator celebration, I was a bit surprised. Why? I didn't overcome any incredible hardships. I don't have a particularly inspiring story to tell. I'm just a Timberlane grad who was able to find some success in a career that I really love. And I could name dozens of other Timberlane grads who have done that same thing. And that's when it clicked. This was not about me at all, but about all of the teachers who helped me and so many other students get to where we wanna be and fulfill our dreams. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your commitment to your students, for your innate desire to make us better people. We are so lucky to have you. I am really sorry I couldn't be there with you in person, but I'm busy doing what I love on one of the most important days of the year in New Hampshire. I hope you all cast your ballots today. I'll have your results tonight live on NBC 10 Boston. I'll see you then. And before I let you go, don't forget, a simple email, a handwritten note, might be the encouragement that one of your students carries with them every day for decades to come.